His name is Ish Berry, and this is Berry Media Unrestricted. He explores the city of Houston, looking for people who are not afraid to get unrestricted. Interesting men and women who have an extraordinary journey, doing the kind of things that make great stories to tell for the rest of us. Now get ready for Unrestricted. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Barry Media Unrestricted. I am your host, Ish Barry. Miss Blue is out of the office today, so she won't be getting paid today. So I don't know what to say about that. But, <laughs> but no, all joking aside, this is episode number 32. Thanks for joining us today in the hot seat. Well, I see you aren't really that hot. But we have the one and only... This woman's a legend in the Houston bodybuilding community, fitness scene. We have uh, the great, uh, just fantastic overall badass, Stephanie Trevino yep. of Team SBM. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for coming. Um, glad it finally made because last time I had to cancel because of that Houston weather. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Houston has some crazy weather, I'm telling you. It really does, and, and I always play it safe and sorry because i don't you know this is a podcast it's cool you know and everything but mm -hmm. i don't want someone getting stuck or getting their car flooded trying to come up here it's just not worth it so on thursdays if if it's anything over a 40 percent chance of rain i'm canceling yeah you know oh. and there's certain i never know also what part of town someone's coming from if they're coming from work they're coming from home definitely whatever and it's like if you're coming from the Southwest, everyone knows Southwest floods like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't want people to get stuck. And I don't want to get stuck. <laughs> this place closes at 10 p.m. And they are quick to get out the door here and start cutting off lights and everything. Like, so I'm like, we don't care where you go. But exactly. <laughs> get the heck up out of here. And I respect that. So it's like anything over 40% chance, I'm canceling. Yeah. But anyway, thank you for making the time. No Come problem. here. We got a lot to cover. Um, let's start from the beginning. Your first time guest. Hopefully this will be the first of many. Uh, you're from Houston, right? Born and raised? Born and raised. And honestly, I do not think I will ever live anywhere else. Um, I've traveled a lot, but mm -hmm. it just nothing feels like Houston. The diversity, everything. Most diversity in America. I think we beat mm -hmm. New York with that now. Yeah. Nice. And New York was a diverse city for <sighs> decades. They got a little bit of everybody, but Houston finally beat them on a demographic. So that's, that's good. awesome. What part of town you grew up in? Um, so I grew up on the east side of Houston, so Jaceno City, Galena Park. Okay. Not the best area, but... Okay. They got some good food in that area. Oh, of course. That's... Oh, man. That's where the old... Uh, me and a friend was talking about a couple of weeks ago. San Jacinto Mall-ish mm -hmm. area. Okay, Over yeah. There, yep. Yeah, and I finally... I found out, like... Last month that they tore that mall down, I had no idea. They did. Yeah, I didn't, I, yeah, yeah. I didn't even know. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know. I hadn't been on that side of town in a while. And a buddy of mine, she told me she was like, "Oh yeah, they tore that mall down." I googled it, and I'm like, "Oh." I mean, they probably needed to. <laughs> yeah, malls are are slowly going away. But so, um, if you want me asking, what high school you went to? I went to North Shore, though. I, okay. I, I, so it was around sixth grade. Um, I moved to um, like the. Uh, I guess it's called Cloverleaf, so like North yeah. Shore area. Okay. Um, and so I went to North Shore Middle School, North Shore High School. Okay. Mm -hmm. The most winningest football oh, team man. in the all city. All football, all the time. <laughs> Did you oh. play any uh, sports in high school? No, it's so weird because like I am so so athletic now. Mm -hmm. But when I was growing up, I was just such a nerd. Um, all I wanted to do was like read and learn, and I was on the speech and debate team. And nice. Okay. I didn't do anything athletic until i was already 20 okay that you know what i i feel you on that because believe it or not i was the same way i i mean i come from a big sports family mm -hmm. and growing up like my family only had one tv so my parents are big both diehard sports fans so, i mean i would watch sports with them but i had no interest in school playing sports i was also on debate speech and debate team there you go i was in school newspaper uh, I took a whole bunch of like tech classes as electives and stuff, and I didn't start getting heavily into sports until maybe like mid twenties. But when I was a kid, I do remember looking at a magazine in a grocery store we lived in Louisiana, which got me into bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what magazine it was. I don't want to say Flex, but it was it. Dorian Yates was on the cover. Okay. He was the reigning Mister Olympia okay. then. 
And I'm like, this guy looks like a cartoon character. Yeah. And I asked my dad, must have been like in the sixth grade. And I was like, dad, you buy this for me? He was like, okay. And then as I got in the, <laughs> in the Bible, but even in school, like I didn't want to like lift weights. There's this nerd, but I still kept up with, I would get bodybuilding. I just mm-hmm. thought people was just like, cool. It was like these real life superheroes. <laughs> like, it's, it's so funny that you say that because like, my first like experience with that is like my dad used to lift weights and okay. he would buy the bodybuilding magazines. So like that was the first time I ever saw like bodybuilders, even in, like and in, in back in the day, like they had some female bodybuilders yeah. in there. Um, and I was just like, wow, this is this is crazy. But I never, never imagined like myself doing any of that. Gotcha. What got you into to bodybuilding? It's um, it's kind of a weird story. I was um, so I got pregnant at 19 okay. and I had my son at 20. Um, and I was just not not a healthy person. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I grew up with my, both my parents working. So, you know, we ate fast food a lot, yeah. out of boxes, things like that. And, and so once my son was um, born, I remember when I was pregnant, I was eating like McDonald's like two, three times a day. Mm-hmm. It was just really bad. Yeah. Um, and I after I had him, I was about 189 pounds, so like 190. Okay. Um, and for a frame of reference, I'm five foot. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so I actually had a coworker that was like a, a collegiate like track athlete and and he kind of like pulled me aside and he was like look he's like you're really young you're really overweight he's like you are gonna have a really hard time in life just just with like your confidence and everything mm-hmm. unless you like do something about it and he's, gotcha. he said i will show you how to lift weights he's like i'm not gonna keep up with it you have to keep up with yeah. it but i'm gonna teach you um and so i went into like a bally's total fitness i learned how to lift weights and i kind of fell in love with it um and i never really wanted to be like skinny or anything like that but yeah. i loved how strong i felt mm. um and so then i had you know i hired trainers because obviously i knew i didn't know what i was doing yeah so i always had a trainer and then one one time i had a trainer that was a bodybuilder and he was like you should try this like you know your, your frame and everything yeah. is kind of built for this and the rest is history i just got into it from there that's dope and kudos for your co-worker for pulling you aside oh, yeah. like hey i'll Give you the foundation. It's up to you if you're gonna, you know, keep it up. Yeah. That's 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 pretty dope. All right. So, how long was it before you started competing? And well, I guess taking it to that level of competing. You say you had a trainer that was a bodybuilder. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, hey, you got the frame. You know, you should do this. So, how did that come about? So, when I first my first show was in 2009. Okay. Um, I did a very small, like, local, like, all-natural bodybuilding show. Okay. Um, and there was not a lot of competitors, you know, 10-plus maybe. Um, I won first place, won overall. Nice. Um, and at that point, it was like, okay, I want to kind of compete with the the big dogs. Like, gotcha, yeah. I want to compete against a lot of people. Um, and so I started competing in NPC, which, you know, is the gateway to IFBB. IFBB, yeah. Um, and I started competing in that. That was just a whole different ballgame. I mean, so it, I had to lose all the weight first. Okay. Um, and then I think my first show, I competed at 109. So I okay. went from 189 to 109. Impressive. Congrats. That's, and thank yeah, you. That's like, I, yeah, that it's was, like a 100 pound weight loss. Probably thing. the yeah. hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah. Like, up until that point. And then when I, after I did that show, this was, you know, we didn't know anything about how to put on muscle mass or anything like that. Yeah. So my trainer said, eat as much as you can so we really? can put on okay. muscle. I went back to eating fast food because I was like, <laughs> I mean, that's that's what I yeah, knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I reverted back. I remember eating a water burger before I before gym session. Should be like, we don't eat like, protein, chicken, and yeah, uh, <laughs> fish. The worst client ever. <laughs> I put on 60 pounds after that show. Damn, okay. So 189, 109, back up to 169. Okay, yeah. Um, And then when I started prepping for my next show, it actually was really hard to get that weight off. I bet. So I had to learn that lesson really hard way. All right. Man, damn. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, some of the best, and I, I was reading something or watched something the other day, and some of the best life lessons are learning from your mistakes. You know what I mean? Because now you know, especially you as a trainer, yeah. if you're telling someone to gain, hey, don't go to Whataburger. I don't no. mean that. I mean this, you know. <laughs> Definitely. You know. Um, especially for women. I mean, yeah. it's, and our bodies change and the way that like we metabolize food and stuff, It it's so much different than, than men because of we course, don't yeah. have that natural like testosterone in us. 
And so it um and as we get older, it does definitely get harder to Oh, absolutely. That way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean there's there's documented studies, you know, especially with men, um the older we get, the testosterone levels gradually go down some faster than others, you know, based on genetics and everything and now not to, you know, get off track, but a big thing now in the medical industry is hormone replacement. You know, especially for men, oh, we get definitely. a certain age, you know. And I think a lot of athletes do yeah. it and endorse it and Absolutely. stuff. Yeah. I just listened to that podcast on uh, yeah. the Carol Hooven about the testosterone. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's such a, uh, it, it's just anti-aging. So mm, anti-aging has sure. come such a long way. So like before, you know, when you're in your 30s, 40s, you, you, you just don't have the athletic ability like you did when you're in your 20s. Absolutely. Well, now, I mean, it's, totally different now because they have all of these things that can help you like your body regenerate your body heal itself like testosterone that gives you more like energy yeah it's just a whole different ball game now true going back to your first contest what division did you compete in figure Figure. i've always been figure um my family like my mom and my sister and me were all naturally kind of broad Mm -hmm. um which is Perfect for figure. Like, yeah. even if you don't have big shoulders, if you have a broad, like, frame, yeah. your shoulders develop fast. So True. I've always been in that one division. This is a question I like to ask people. Why, well, women's particular, because I've had a lot of figure women on the mm-hmm. show. Of all the different divisions, why figure and not, you know, well, back then, 2009, there was no physique. So it was just... Mm-mm. Correct me if I'm wrong. It was I don't even think there was no bikini in 2009. I think bikini came around like 2012. So it was just yeah, bodybuilding so, and figure. Yeah, and fitness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fitness, bodybuilding, and figure. So why not figure us um, fitness or bodybuilding? I wish I could do fitness. Like mm-hmm. and, <laughs> I mean, I, jumping around. And, and I told Jazz because huh? she had that gymnastics. Yeah. Like, well, I wish I could like do all those gymnastics, but I wasn't an athlete, so. I would have to learn all that stuff and then That's risk true. being injured, yeah. you know, because there's a lot of injury that comes with that. And then with bodybuilding, um, because I am short and because of like my body type, it's hard for me to get lean enough for figure already. So I couldn't even imagine mm, getting even leaner for bodybuilding body while packing a whole bunch of weight yeah, on the frame. And, That's and a good point. Because I'm short, I put on muscle mass pretty mm-hmm. easily. So that was never an issue, but it was always getting as lean as I needed to be. Gotcha. Um, because over the years, I would have loved to do women's physique because I love the routines. I love yeah. how like, the, it, it's just, to me, it's art. Yeah, I agree. But I man, agree. I don't think I could get there. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about it like that. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta straight. And this seems like, in today's age, and especially with women's bodybuilding and physique, and even for the men's bodybuilding and physique too, you, you got to be shredded. You know, it's like this. I mean, mass monsters are cool, but the days, the era of just the mass monsters oh, is kind of slowly, slowly, mm-hmm. you know, disintegrating. <laughs> it's going away. And, you know, we see that with the Mr. Olympia, yeah. you know, so. A yeah. couple of years ago, um, NPC and IFBB, they kind of both came out and they were like, we're not. We don't want huge, huge size without conditioning. Mm-hmm. You have to be. I can't remember that when they re- mm-hmm. had a press they release. Like, yeah, conditioning is always going to win. Um, and so that means like being as lean as you possibly can. Yeah, but I always like to translate stuff, and I do this at work and with friends. It's like if someone you know has like a nice press release, and I'll translate it like who says like basically what they're saying. Excuse my friend, motherfuckers getting too big out here. Yes. <laughs> Bring that shit down. Look- We're trying to market this and, and make exactly. more money off of this and try to appeal to the masses. And, no, y'all, no, no. The Ronnie Coleman and, and Dorian Yates days. Now y'all need to. Exactly. Even Ronnie was shredded. You know, Dorian was shredded, but they just start getting just out of control. Now I, I, I get that. Um, so how many shows did you do before you earned your uh, your pro card? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, so when I was competing in 2009, mm-hmm. all the way up until 2016, okay. I was really, I was, it's like a hobbyist. Like oh, I, okay, got I wasn't really in it to, to win a pro card or go pro. I was doing it because I did two shows a year. It mm-hmm. kept me in shape. It gave me something to like train for. Okay. But it really wasn't until um, I started coaching a lot of women um, and I felt like I had something to prove. Because I felt like I'm coaching all these women. I need to show them that I can go pro so they know, like, they believe in me. Ah, okay. Nice. Um, and so, and and early on, especially, like, being a large team, we were a large team before there were large teams. That, and, yeah, that's and true. And we, we got a lot of hate, I mean, in the beginning. And so I really felt like, okay, I, I have something to prove to myself and to them and to, to everyone else. 
Um, and so that's 2015 was when I really started taking it seriously. And like, okay. I was like, okay, this is my job now. Nice. Um, and so I, I don't, I've lost track of, I've lost track of how many shows I've lost. Okay. Before I won. Gotcha. Okay. And when did you turn pro? 2016. So okay. 2016, um, I actually just posted a, a, a picture today that was like a throwback in uh, June of 2016. I, Pushing too hard. Me and Amber, we used to like go to the um, do cardio like late at night, ten o'clock at night for an hour. Then go sit in the sauna for like thirty minutes. We just I kind of remember those that old was our posts. Life. Yeah, and that was our life. Well, one one time we did that. I went home, fell asleep, didn't eat anything, just went straight to sleep. Yeah. For whatever reason, the next morning when my alarm, because you know when you're in a deep sleep and your alarm it startles you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Jumped out of bed. I made it maybe three steps and passed out. I had a wood like chair just like that one sitting over there. Okay, got it. Hit my face. Oh. Um, so I fractured my orbital. Um, I woke up and I, I, I went back to bed. Didn't know I had a concussion. Like oh, went back shit. to bed. Um when I finally like woke up and went into the restroom, my, my face was covered in blood. Um and I was three days out at this point. Whoa. Um, so I went into the emergency room. They were like, you need stitches. I was like, I can't have an IV. I'm already dehydrating. Yeah. Um, so they were like, okay. They stitched me up, went to the show, won the show, won first place in my division, and won overall. Fuck. Kudos and congratulations yeah. to you. So basically, I like summarizing stuff. So you had a busted face. Mm -hmm. You know, accident happened at home, and you still competed. Yep. And then kicked ass and won. Yes. And kudos Damn. to my makeup artist for covering, <laughs> covering that up, that up as well. Yeah, yeah. It takes a team could. effort. Ooh. Kudos to the makeup artist. <laughs> wow. But then, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you when your face hit the chair, you say you went back to sleep. Yeah. So I had um so my dog and my son still has this dog to this uh -huh. day. Um, I guess I had hit the chair and then when I woke up, I only woke up because my dog's was, I thought he was biting me. Okay. But that was just because of the pain. But he was really licking my face. Okay. Um, and so I was like, you know, get off of me. I got up. I went and laid back down because I was like, okay, I'm going back to bed. Um, and then I woke up like two hours later, walked into the restroom. I mean, and it's scary. Like, it's a horror scene. Like, you look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah, you flip on the light and you're like, oh, crap. Yeah. It's, you're covered in blood. Um, and I mean, I wasn't, I was fine. I, I was kind of like aware at that point. I was Fine enough to like drive myself to like the emergency room. Okay, stuff, but wow, that's cra that's the craziest story. I have so many <laughs> crazy turning body pro. Stories. If I if I ever heard of one, wow. And what contest was that at? Did you turn pro? Dallas Europa. Okay, okay. And then and then I did um, Miami Nationals that same year at the end Damn. of the year. Now at Dallas Europa, I've never been, but I've seen the coverage and stuff. So that's a big show. A that's huge show. tons and tons. Of people and just to, to emphasize on that, given the scope of that uh, contest, and it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's well at least in recent years, but it's been the span of like two days, right? It's either like a it's Friday, a show. yeah, it's yep. either a Friday or Saturday or a Saturday yep. and Sunday. It's kind of getting like the Arnold mm -hmm. in a sense. So basically, the point I'm trying to get to is like you have all these different competitors in figure alone, and given your accident, you still competed, which. Kudos to you, because I would be like, fuck it, I'm out. I'm, yeah. I'm not here. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll go and be a spectator, but I'm not competing with my face, you know, pain and all that. But you still went, competed, suited up, and mm -hmm. and and kicked ass and won against God knows how many other ladies. So that's that's dope. Wow. And he competed in another contest that following year. So tell us about that one. So that's your... That would have been your pro debut, as they say, um, right? So the next one that I did after that, so Dallas Europa is actually um, a local show. So the uh, Miami Nationals is the next one that I did. Okay, so that's, that's my a national one. one. Okay. It's the biggest show of the year. Yeah. Um, and because it's at the end of the year, so a lot of people, they'll prep all year just for that show. Damn. Um, okay. And it's right. in Miami. I mean, if you're going to do a national show. Might as well. I mean, God. Might as well. You got Pittsburgh. You got Miami. Yeah. Miami. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and so I, I got ready for nationals like right away. Another hard prep. I remember just thinking like, I just have to make it through this. Like, yeah. There were a lot of days where I just did not. I mean, and I was listening to jazz. Very similar. You're exhausted. You're you're just kind of running on fumes at that point. Absolutely. Um, But I went, I competed in that show and I won first place. And that was my first Congratulations. national show. First time. One and done. Like got my pro card. Right away. Wow. 
That's dope. And no, no better place than Miami because, like, me as a photographer, I would just love to go to that Miami show and just photograph people on the beat. You know what I mean? Like, yes. that would be, I mean, those pictures, you got beautiful physiques, men and women, mm-hmm. everybody, and then you got gorgeous beaches and just decor and background, everything. Like, it's, it's, it's paradise. And let me tell you, like, that particular show, there's a lo- there's so many photographers there. I bet. Um, and I met one of my favorite ones, Will Edwards. Okay, yeah, um, I've heard and of him. So, and it was funny because I was actually, I had um, girls that were, like, me and Hassan had girls that were competing mm-hmm. at that show. And um, I was competing too, but the the first day was like bikini. The second day was figure. Yeah. So the first day I was actually not competing. I was just walking around, coat like helping you know my girls. Mm-hmm. And Will Edwards came up to me and he's like, "I have to shoot you." He's like, "Can you do a shoot in like two hours?" That's the same like, thing I do. <laughs> he's like, "I'll pay you two hours." Yeah. And I was like, "I guess." And yeah. So like I did a shoot with him, and I mean I've I'm still friends with him to this day. Nice. But and then when I won my pro card, I guess I wasn't expecting to win my pro card. But the next day you have a pro photo shoot. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. First thing in the morning, yeah. I had with to, all the other first place. Winners, I had yeah. to change my flight and everything because I was trying to go back home and yeah. work. I was like, I got to get back to work. Um, and, I, and I know nowadays because of like social media, like they're real adamant about that. Like, no, you don't go. <laughs> you gotta yeah, do this photo shoot because you know there's so much stuff involved. And uh, we, I said on um, um, on another episode, you know, Jake Wood with his influence and. You know, just hey, no, you do this. Got to pump mm-hmm. out, got to promote, etc. That's that's dope. Wow. And you know, one thing that I didn't realize, and you just reminded me, is like you compete with your athletes. Like you're a trainer yourself. Yeah. And that what what is that like? Like you're on the same stage with the people you train. That, They're on the same stage with you. And that was kind of like that was really really difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't really difficult because I was like, I want to beat my athletes. Um, it was really difficult because they had more of my focus. And so I wasn't able to focus as much on my prep. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and it's funny because Maud, um, who's one of our other, like the girl, she went, did the North Dakota show with Jazz. Okay. Yeah. Um, she actually, we both won our pro cards at the same time. So to have oh, me and cool. one of my clients like go pro at the same time is, is, is kind of unheard of. It's yeah. crazy. Um, but no, once I started competing as a pro, and I was on the stage with my other pros. Um, I realized like this is not this is not what I'm. I'm not a competitor. I'm a coach. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and that's kind of why I retired from bodybuilding. And I actually I did not know that. Wow. I, I was I was going to actually later on. I was like, okay, what's your next show? Can you tell us? Mm-hmm. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh, and I'll snap. tell you when it happened. It was okay. 2018 Tampa Pro. It was okay. me, Maud, and Amber, and we were all competing in the same show. Um, and I remember I was backstage. One of the other pros, her suit came on. Like, we were trying to fix our suit. Yeah. We get on the stage. And, I mean, at, uh, as pros, there's no height class. Yeah, that's true, you yeah. all compete against each other. Mm-hmm. So I'm on the stage with Maud, with Amber. Um, and I remember I was in the lineup in the back. And Maud, she gets, like, first call-outs or second call-outs. And she turns the wrong way in the quarter turns. Like, um, all the athletes turn one way. And yeah. she turns the opposite way. Yikes. And I'm in line. I break, break out. Of, I'm like like trying to wave at her. We're yeah. trying to like yell at her, like call her. And it was like, that was like the moment when I was like, you're not, a, you, you're not a competitor anymore. You're a coach. coach yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow. And then, you know, like I know people take breaks, but like, I, like I've been following you for a while and, and everything. I was like, okay, yeah, I haven't seen her compete. And I was like, well, people take breaks and they had a woman, um, <clears throat> last year, excuse me. Um, Asha Hadley, you know, she took like a six year break and then oh, yeah. came back and then transferred from women's physique to women's bodybuilding, everything. So like, maybe Stephanie's taking a break. But okay, I didn't know you could tie happy retirement. Thank you. I like to see you do, I like to see you do one more show, but hey, so that's just bodybuilding that's just is always me. there. And I, yeah, that's that's true. I always it's not going tell anywhere. people like once you're a pro, you're a pro. So you that's can true. always go back and do another show. You don't have to um, you know, hang it up for good. I don't think I'll ever do another show. But you never know. Um, I mean, I'm doing jujitsu now, so I compete a lot in that. It's kind of giving me my like competitive like bug. So. Gotcha. Yeah, and that's a great segue. Tell us about that because I, I just happened to get on Instagram one day and I was like, oh shit, what is this? <laughs> it's like, damn. <laughs> I was like, man, you're in martial arts yes. now. And correct me if I'm, but it's Brazilian jujitsu mm-hmm. to be more specific, yes. right? Yes. How'd you get into that? 
So the um, when my son was small, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to put him in martial arts. I always wanted to be in martial arts, but when I grew up, we just didn't have money. So, you know, we didn't yeah. do anything extracurricular. Um, but I was like, I'm going to put my son in martial arts. Um, he did Taekwondo for a little while. Okay. And then we moved to Katy and then, you know, looked for martial arts schools, came across like a Gracie Baja, like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu school. Okay. I put him in it. Um, and then I was married at the time. My husband started it. And then, of course, I was there every day because I had to take my son. Yeah. So it's like, like, you might as well join. This kind of looks fun. And then I started doing it, you nice. know, fast forward seven years. Now I'm coaching kids jujitsu. Like oh, my nice. daughter's okay. been doing jujitsu since she was three. Like it's just a family kind of affair now. Okay, nice. And so I guess it also explains why specifically Brazilian jujitsu mm -hmm. versus any other style of fighting. Okay. So what's the training like for that versus, you know, coming from the world of bodybuilding? Um, it's very different. Um, I have always loved the bodybuilding type of training. It's, mm -hmm. it's long. It's tedious. It's like you just got to like put your head down and just do it. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're in the you're in the gym two three hours. Then you have cardio another two hours. Like yeah, at least, it's it's yeah. it's a full day. Um, with jujitsu, it's similar in the fact that there's a lot of different components. So it's not like I'm just going in and training jujitsu. I also train wrestling. I also train, oh, like, wow, okay. you know, there's there's other things that we train, um, you know, and there's so many different attacks in jujitsu. You got arm locks, you got leg locks, you got so many different, like, avenues. And then I also do strength and conditioning on top of that because I want to be, I don't want to get Damn. winded. Yeah. I want to get yeah. gassed. Um, I'm that actually, makes sense. actually, um, I'm using um, Alyssa Cantu. So she's at Grindhouse. She um, does the strength and conditioning for the beast. Okay. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah. And so, and, and she actually trains jujitsu where I, I train and she's just amazing. So I go in, she kills me with these like strength and conditioning, but it's a lot more like movement. It's not like lifting weights. It's, okay. you know, we're doing a lot of pull movements cause we had to pull bodies like, you know, lift that, yeah. heavy ball throws over our shoulder cause we're like lifting people now. Like, so it's, it's very like dynamic kind of movement. Wow. Okay. And how long you been doing that? When did you start training for a, uh... When you start competing in in uh, competitions for that, so I started jujitsu in 2014. Actually, there was a couple of years that I did both. Oh snap! Okay, I had together no idea. that okay. that was a little that was a little. That's crazy because like you just said, the training is totally different. That was a little intense. There were some times I was like, "What am I doing?" Um, but I actually um, I did that for a couple of years, and then in 2014 I started jujitsu, mm -hmm. and then I actually had to. Um, it took me about three or four years before I was confident enough to start competing. Wow. Okay. Wow. But now like I compete like, so we have these things in jujitsu. They're called super fights. Okay. So they're on a stage. They're like, you know, warehouse live, like, you know, just, oh, like, I had no idea. Where oh, it, had it's, competitions. Okay. it's like a huge, like, it's kind of like an MMA yeah. um, fight without the cage. Yeah. It's on a stage. There's lights. There's like crowds, you know, full packed houses. So, that's fun. Not okay. I'm gonna have to check one out and go to one. Man, wow. Okay. So, what what's been your most recent uh, competition? So, uh, let's see. I did a super fight back in mm, April or May. Um, so I had ACL surgery last year. Okay. So I was kind of out for a year, but it, it was a COVID year, so it was a great year to yeah. not be competing because nobody course, was competing. Yeah. Um, so I, I finally got back into it. Um, the last one I did was uh, Nogi Pants. Um, so that's like a huge international Brazilian jiu-jitsu like competition. Um, and because Texas is open, a lot of them are here. I bet. As opposed to California, Florida. Um, so that was the last one I did. I think it was maybe a month ago. Okay. Yeah. Uh, nice. And how did you, how did you do in that show? That, that competition? Uh, well, that one, I actually, I lost, um, my division. Um, but because there was only a few of us, we still like, you still medal. So I actually did an absolute division. So absolute division means no matter what your weight is, you go against anyone. Damn. Yeah. Wow. So I'm a, I'm a purple belt. And uh -huh. so it means at purple belt, like they still try to match us up by age, but it means like, and of course the first, first match I get, I get a heavyweight. And I'm a lightweight. <laughs> so, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> and then that was, but you know what? That was like, it was an awesome match. I mean, I had so much fun competing and I just made one, one small error at the end and I ended up losing um, by points uh -huh. because I went for a submission and I should have just like 
try to win by points. Gotcha. Okay. Um, but I was like, no, I got this submission and I didn't have it. So wow, it was pretty cool. But I got, I think I got double bronze at that. Oh, okay. Congrats. Yep. That must be crazy. I can't. <laughs> that's just, oh, that's I like when you see a heavyweight coming. It looks, it's like, so, the fuck? It, <laughs> it looks so funny. The pictures are like, you know, so funny. But it, man, it was it was really good. It was really good. Okay, nice. So tell us about going back to fighting just a tad bit. So when did you get into coaching? Because um, you, you're you're founder of Team SBM. Yeah. Tell us about that. So it that whole story is it. I always said I would never coach bodybuilding, mm-hmm. and there was a reason because I okay. was a bodybuilder. I knew what I knew what we were like. I knew how kind of like neurotic we are. Mm-hmm. How like we're about our food and the way we look and like kind of like very, a body, very meticulous ooh, and, and <laughs> yeah. kind of like body dysmorphia. Like you know, um, to an extent, I, I said I would never do it. I had a lot of nutrition clients. I was doing nutrition pretty regularly, um, and I had um, she was a lawyer. She had been an athlete her whole life. She looked like a walking figure competitor already. Damn, okay. Um, and she's like, I really want to do this. I think she played tennis, like, in college and stuff. So she had huge shoulders. Yeah. And um, she said, I want to do a bodybuilding show. I want you to coach me. And I was like, mm, I don't want to. <laughs> so I ended up coaching her, and she went pro her first year. Damn, okay. It was it was crazy. And so I started, like, doing a lot more bodybuilding things, going to posing. Um, and that's how I actually met Hassan. Because he had a client um, and, you know, he was like, can you help her? I did her nutrition. And then he was like, when she won, he was like, can you do my nutrition? He's like, I have, he's like, I'm a horrible, like, I have the worst diet. It's really hard to do my nutrition. I only eat twice a day. Like, you know, and I was like, I can do anybody's diet. Nice. Okay. I did his diet. And then it was kind of like from that relationship was like, you're really good at training. I'm really good at nutrition. Let's kind of like join forces. Yeah. And, like, see what we can do. I mean, and it kind of exploded on us. There was a point when we had over 150 clients. I, I bet. Because, like, I was telling you earlier before we started, I did some pictures for Christy Davis. Mm-hmm. Shout out to her. And she, I forgot what show it was, but I want to say maybe it was 2016. She did a show at a NRG. Yep. Um, Texas I, Cup. Cup. Yeah, yeah. Yep. bingo. That's the mm-hmm. one. You're absolutely right. Yeah, Texas Cup. And I remember, like, I, I usually, when I do go to a contest, I stay to the very end and just take candid pictures and stuff. Oh, yes. I and I remember, remember like, the contest was over, and when y'all hold team, I was like, I was like a little army. Like, these people could take over, like, fucking Panama or something. <laughs> like, there were so, so many of us at that that's show. Just that, that, yeah. I, I, y'all just killed it with all the awards and whatnot. Yep. And then that's when it really clicked with me. I was like, okay, so... Having a team is really a thing in bodybuilding now to where, because I, I cut, well, I, just to put like my age in percent, I'm 37, I'll be 38 in October. So when I first got interested in bodybuilding, as I was saying earlier, when I was like six or seven grade or whatever, like everything was individual, you know, mm-hmm. like all of the greats like didn't have, you know, Ronnie Coleman didn't have a team, Linda Murray didn't have a team, it was just them. And, you know, now you fast forward to the, you know, 20, teens or late oh, yeah. 20 teams and it's like you know you have all these teams that are, are cropping up but that's yeah you guys i believe it. I, i've seen it my own eyes i got mm-hmm. pictures uh somewhere i'll put them in the um the youtube version but yeah you guys are several people deep and um and then there was another one too the first phil heath competition mm-hmm. the first yeah. one here yeah, yeah the first one here i was at um the Mu- bayou place yeah that was the worst show because mm-hmm. it they didn't anticipate that many people and it was so hot backstage oh, wow. that people were sweating profusely because you're in a you're you got tan on. Yeah. It went so long. I mean, I think we got out of there like two AM. That sounds about right. Ooh, that was, was the only one. I know I just said that I usually I stayed to the end. That was the one I did not stay to the end. I left around midnight. I was like, and yeah, I was, I was like, God. I'm like, this is actually getting ready to go into a whole other day. Mm-hmm. I didn't know it was until two. And I, you know, I took a couple of pictures of some winners I saw walking out and, you know, threw my business card at them if they wanted to do photos. And then I I went home. Yep. <laughs> but damn, I didn't know it was like that. And, and people don't realize that either. It's like when you're competing in, in any of the divisions at bodybuilding, you're already dehydrated because, mm-hmm. you know, lack of water and stuff. You're agitated. Yep. You know, because of carb depletion, not eating and stuff, and 
Then if you're at a venue where there's no AC, <laughs> yes. and then for women, you know, I mean, men got to have tanner on anyway, but then women, you got to have, you know, tanner, hair, and makeup, and the makeup, makeup you know, getting messed up. That mm -hmm. that sucks, and yeah, oh, man, I didn't know that. Yep. The, um, Good times. <laughs> Good time. Okay, if it doesn't kill you, make you stronger, and yeah, it, make, it makes true. for a hell of stories to tell. Exactly. Um, but um, going back to Team SBM, what um, like, so at the peak was it uh, like a hundred plus clients? Yeah, I want to say two hundred plus. Damn. Okay. I say 200 wow. Plus. Yeah, but but the the allure was, and I was listening to jazz, um, and the allure was exactly that. Like, if you have never done a show before. Mm -hmm. We knew how to do everything. Mm. Like we knew when to buy your card. We knew what color suit you should wear. We knew what kind of heels were the best. We knew who did the best makeup, who did the best tan. And so it's kind of like you walked into it and you're like, oh, this is already made for me. Yeah. Um, one and stop we even shop, had yeah. like a competitor um like packet. Mm. So when you came in and you're like, I want to do a bodybuilding show, we would give you this packet and it would say, like, these are things you need on show day. These are things, you know to be mindful of. I mean, it nice. was just like, kind of like a, you know, do it yourself kind of yeah. bodybuilding packet. That's what's up. That's genius. Cause I, I, I've, I've listened to stories and watched different interviews of people. And, um, you know, some people just don't know, you know, like I've heard some stories of women's like, they go to a bodybuilding show and I think to do makeup or hair or something, oh, or, yeah. you know, it's like, I mean, and I get it. Cause like, okay, well it's a bodybuilding show, but at the same time it is, Somewhat of a beauty contest, contest. too. It's a muscle -ish. beauty yeah. contest. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. Definitely. Yeah, it's a muscle beauty contest. So you do want to have hair, makeup, nails. Uh, great. So when you're when you're training someone for a bodybuilding show, mm -hmm. what is what's probably the e what's the easiest and the hardest divisions to train? Ooh, um, I'm gonna say bikini. That's the easiest or the hardest? Hardest. Really? Okay. Yes. Because um, they're... So before wellness, because now they have mm -hmm. the wellness division. Um, bikini is one of the harder ones because the muscle divisions like figure and women's physique, you kind of know like how to grow those muscles. Okay. But in bikini, you're trying to grow the lower body muscles without growing the upper body muscles mm. to where it's, you know... Gotcha, yeah. Disproportionate. Um, and so that's probably one of the most difficult ones. And because it's one of the newer, because it was one of the newer divisions. Yeah. Very subjective. And so, like, you know, we would take girls and some shows, they would be like, oh, they're too lean. And then take them back. Oh, they're too soft. That's got to oh. be nerve-wracking. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> they, they don't have enough shoulder. And then, you know, fast forward a couple shows. Oh, they have too much shoulders. And so it was like, it was, that is such a challenging that division sucks. because- we never really understood, like, okay, well, what are you looking for? Um, and it would vary from state to state. It would vary from judge to judge. Um, and it was just the most nerve-wracking, like, division. I bet. Wow. Okay. Damn. And I want to no, say bikini imagine. athletes are probably the hardest athletes out of all of them to do it. Really? Why is that? They just, they complain the most. <laughs> um, I feel like, I feel like the muscle divisions attract a certain personality. Mm-hmm. I just get in, yeah. go hard. Like, I want to be, you Yeah, know, you're, in a, you're in a rocky mode. Yeah. And yeah you just... I'm, I'm suffering, but I'm not going to say I'm suffering. Yeah. Uh, bikini, a little different. Very, um, because the division is very, like, feminine and kind of prissy. Yeah, kind like, of sassy. You want to yeah. be sassy. And, I mean, if you are naturally those things, it's going to attract you to that vision. Yeah. So then you're dealing with a bunch of 100-plus sassy women. Ooh, man. <laughs> Hats off to you. Damn, I didn't. Wow. Yeah. Because I remember um, I interviewed um, one of your other clients, uh, Ty. And um, Ty I, Gordon, I, she's married now, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And she was, you know, she was saying that. She's like, oh, yeah, you know, I was carb depleted and <laughs> this, the other, oh, and yeah. working out and cardio and I couldn't get too big. And I was like, oh, that, yeah. See, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, it's, it's very challenging because. You're lifting weights, and if your body naturally puts on muscle, genetics, yeah. Oh, you're like, oh, you got to do more cardio now. Yeah. So now you're doing even more cardio, and you're eating less food because we don't want you to get too big. So it's it's a very it's a very wow. hard balance. I bet. 
And so what would be the easiest to train? Just any muscle division or a particular one? Mm, I, it really just, I would say probably figure because with women's physique, it's it's still challenging because you have to really make sure that everything develops. I mean, yeah. you can't just have legs. You have to have upper body legs, sure. chest. Like you're hitting all the bodybuilder poses. Um, and so with figure, as long as you're symmetrical, you know, you're 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 pretty good. Like as long as your upper body matches your lower body. Okay. Okay. And so it's kind of like the in between. That makes sense. Maybe it was just because the one I liked the most. Hey, is that wrong being a, a little the one biased? I enjoyed the most. <laughs> yeah, that's why it was easiest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would I would think it would be, um, physique just because in a, either on the men or women's side because if you get too muscular mm-hmm. and especially because most women, unless you just a woman is just that have that animal inside of her. It's like, you don't want to get too muscular. So then, bam, you're a bodybuilder now, yeah. you know, and you're in a whole different field. And then you don't want to not get, you don't want to have not enough. And then you're in figure. And then, yeah. you know, so. It's hard to, um, you have to look at somebody's frame and Good really point. say like, this is where you're going to excel. Mm. Um, And that may change over time, but a good coach is not someone that, you know, somebody comes in and says, I want to do bikini. And they're like, okay, fine, you can do bikini. There's someone that looks at you and says, you're not built for a bikini. Mm. You're built for a figure. And if 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 you want to do bikini, I understand, but it's going to take years to get you as small as you need to be. Gotcha. Um, and so you have to be realistic with people. Okay. Have you had any problems with that? Like when someone says, you know, hey, I want to do this. And you're like, eh, like you just said. And then it just, well... Yeah, because so you, you could tell, like they'll say, you can only lead a horse to water. So if you're mm-hmm. telling someone, hey, I think you'll be good based on your frame and your genetics for this division, and then they still adamant and want to go with the division they have in their mind, and then when things don't go their way, <laughs> I is have you ever had any problems with that? Like just someone's, absolutely. Wow. Oh, absolutely. And actually what, what started happening over the years is if they would kind of like push back on mm-hmm. with it, we would say, well, you're not going to compete under us. Mm, okay. Because yeah, you're kind of representing our name, and that's and, true. Um, and so they would go compete on their own, mm-hmm. and of course not get the desired results. And and it was it was very difficult. That was probably that's always been the hardest part of coaching for me, um, is the personalities, like managing the personalities, but managing like people's expectations, and then when they get hurt and upset and they lash out at you ah. that was always a hard part for me um and it's kind of why i like you know the past like year or two i've kind of like i don't want to coach bodybuilders anymore because it's 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 um it's very like it it breaks your heart kind of yeah you know, when somebody comes back and says well you won't let me do bikini i'm gonna do it anyway and then they lose and then they're like well it's your fault <laughs> <laughs> i wish people could see this like how is it your fault when you told them, hey, bikini's not going to work for you? You know, if yeah. anything, I mean, I know everybody's different, but I'm, I always pride myself of being a kind of person. And if my co-host was here, she'd tell you, it's like, sometimes I do go against the grain and don't listen to, you know, a person's advice. But at least I'm I'm adult enough and man enough to say, if things go south, I'm like, hey, you know what? You told me so. Right. I should have listened to you. Right. You know, hey. Next time, slap me across my face when I want to go yeah. and get your advice, you know, or something. Wow, damn, that sucks. Damn. So what's the most rewarding part of coaching? I mean, just seeing seeing like the the joy, the achievement of it all. Over the years, and, and this, with myself as well, mm-hmm. there's been a lot of competitors who come in and their families are not supportive. They're like, I can't believe you want to do this. I can't believe you want to get up there. Or they doubt themselves. They're like, I'm not made for this. I can't do this. Um, and... I started like one of the things that I started doing when I was coaching because I was always backstage with everyone. Gotcha. Like, and when we got to a point, I remember like Hassan was in front taking pictures and I was always backstage with them. And I would give them like a little pep talk before they got on stage. Okay. And I would always tell them this one sentence and I would tell them, I'll see you on the other side. Because you go up the stage, mm. you come down the other side. Yeah. But it's not, you just go up the stage and you come down the other side. When you get up there, it's like everything makes sense. You're like, oh, this is why I was carb depleted. This is why I woke up. Good point. Because it's just this feeling of like achievement that there's so few people in the world that have ever felt that particular joy mm-hmm. that when you come down from the other side of that that stage, 
it changes your life. Oh, I never You're like, if I could that. do that, I can do anything. And that that's what it did for me. That's what yeah. bodybuilding did for me. It okay. changed my life. Um, and and I also saw it change like when families saw like their wife or their mom or yeah. up there on stage, it changed their perspective of what bodybuilding is. I bet. That's that's dope. I never thought about it like that, but that's that's dope. What do you think about the current state of just bodybuilding as a whole? Just um like you have any grievances, you think everything's going in the right direction. Um, but what are your thoughts? So I I can't really judge because COVID year was was that's kind true. of like a terrible year for bodybuilding. Yeah. But right before that, um, I had a lot of grievances. Um, you know, especially with like the promotions, local promotions, it got to a point where they were treating the coaches because we have always, we have always been backstage and with our athletes and right next to oh, them yeah. um, and helping other athletes too, not just their own. But it got to a point where um, some of the like higher judges or like the, the NPC staff or the people that are over it, over Texas um, would treat us like, like, what are y'all doing back here? You know, like, you're you're not supposed to be back here. You're kind of like they treat us like a nuisance, um, and and that was really difficult. Yeah, that's bizarre to that's... deal with. Um, and they started doing that not just at local shows, at national shows. Like, oh, no coaches allowed backstage with your athletes. Um, and that was that was pretty that was pretty hard. I had no idea. Damn, mm-hmm. okay. there's a lot of politics and drama and. In bodybuilding, just like any sport. sport yeah, yeah, or anything in life. Exactly. <laughs> I was saying on my day job, I was telling some some coworkers the other day, I was like, look, y'all think this is bad. I've worked in banking. I've worked in travel. There's politics and bureaucracy everywhere. everywhere. Just some places, some industries is more than others. It's, it's, it's almost kind of like human nature to a certain extent. But I digress on that. Yep. But, um, but yeah, I mean, did they ever give a reason why? I mean, is it because of like, you know, maybe... There's, especially with smaller shows and smaller venues, I could kind of understand, you know, because you got so many athletes Mm -hmm. and, you know, it just gets too crowded or whatever. Plus, you still got to have an area in the back, like pump room, you know, and makeup. I I could understand that. And then also from like the whole, um, what do you call it, depending on the the county, the whole fire code Mm -hmm. thing. But just saying it, just to say it, it's like, what you know what I mean? Like... I, I make it make sense to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Um, and, and I think what happened is um, we had some Texas promoters mm-hmm. um, and they were amazing. They, they came up from like expediters all the way to like main, you know, over all of Texas. Um, and they, they were amazing. They treated the athletes well, the judges well, the, the staff well, the coaches well. Um, and then there was like a big turnover and then they left. Oh, damn. Okay. And then it got really like, then now, oh, you want to be backstage? You have to pay. You want to be backstage? I thought I you saw that somewhere. Pay okay. For, um, even though you're you're a coach, you're not competing, you have to pay for an NPC card plus a backstage pass. Plus, if it's a two day show, a two. And so it got really kind of crazy. Wow. I, I thought I read that somewhere. And at first, I was like, that's got to be some hoax or, or mm-hmm. something. Nope. Uh, wow. Damn. Wow, that's crazy. Wow. Damn. Yeah. I mean, it's just like in any other sport, you know, you're going to have people, people that are needed backstage. I mean, just like in football, you got to have trainers. You got to have all of your different coaches and, and whatnot. You know, you got to have reporters, you know, um, you know, other personnel and whatnot. So uh, medical staff, et cetera. So. Wow, that's bizarre. Huh. And for me, like as a as as a coach, I was a very hands on coach too. Mm-hmm. With, with especially backstage, that was the that was part of the joy for me. I bet I didn't want to sit and be a spectator in the audience. I wanted to be there with my athletes. Like and you, you heard Jazz's story about like how what happened to her when she came off stage. Yeah, I was right there with her. Like oh, she, the incident that she talked. Oh yeah, about. oh she shit. Was, okay, she was crying, and I I'm bet. like the one that's trying to talk her into going back on stage, but. If I was a spectator, I wouldn't have been able to do any of that. And she yeah. probably would have not competed in the finals. Yeah. Oh, so you're the one that had, okay. Not, not, now the dots and everything are all connected. I mean, she touched on that. Okay, kudos to you for, for helping her out there. That yeah. was freaking horrible. Oh, it was and, all of us. We were all like, the whole team was just furious. Like, we were all like, who, who do we need to talk to to make yeah. this right? Yeah, it was. Damn, okay. 
Ooh-wee. Um, wow. So, I mean, would you suggest anyone, with that being said, like, not... I, is there any way around that, like, do... If someone wants to compete not doing local shows and going, you know, maybe trying to do a show in another state or... It's one of those things just kind of go, oh, it is what it is. You can run that shit anywhere. Exactly. Okay. You're going to run into it anywhere. Um, there are a lot of people that do not like to compete in Texas. They'll go to Louisiana or they'll go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just kind of one of those things. You're going to run into it anywhere. Gotcha. Unavoidable, really. Gotcha. So what do you think? Who are some of your, uh, since you're a figure, well, mm -hmm. retired mm -hmm. figure athlete, <laughs> um, what are some of the figure competitors that you that inspired you and that you look up to? I came up kind of like in the Nicole Wilkins area. Oh, like, that's yeah. name I heard in a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, her and I mean, um, you know, obviously Latoya and Candice, mm -hmm. like amazing physiques. Like that was kind of like when I was really heavy into competing. Yeah. I was like watching that back and forth. Um, you know, and 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 honestly, both of those ladies, like they're just so beautiful. Like so, oh yeah, and they're just such nice humans like and when you meet them you know they're the, like olympia and like miss figure olympia and they're just so down to earth and so sweet and genuine and it, and that really was like that was kind of like really eye opening for me cuz in fitness and and I'm I know you've experienced mm -hmm. this there are people that you will see on cover of magazines or you know on social media and then you meet them in real life and you're like hmm it's not a nice person yeah i've had a couple <laughs> <laughs> but for me, like those yeah. particular ones mm -hmm. were they're they're you know, and um Sandra Gregalis from Mexico, Oh yeah, like the sweetest people backstage, like after like after shows, like yeah. just all the time. Like and and so those were really like kind of people I looked up to. And I'll I know the name of this show is unrestricted, but I don't want too much smoke. But out of all my years just being a fan of bodybuilding and mm -hmm. I've been to I um, haven't been to Olympia, but I've been to two Arnold Classics and been to a whole bunch of shows in Texas. I've only ran a, one big person that was kind of like, mm -hmm. mm, you know, yeah, I respect you as an athlete, you know, but your personality, uh, yeah. nah, you know. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but so far, knock on wood, <laughs> um, that, that was only that one person, but everybody else I've ever met has just been you know, awesome, you know, and, and like you said, like, you look up, it's like, and I even tell my co-host Blue, you know, it's like, oh, you know, this person's a magazine, or this person's one of the top athletes in this division in the entire planet, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, they don't even phase me, it's like, oh, you know, I like what I do, and it comes with medals or whatever, you know, fuck it, you know, it's definitely, like, damn, you know, you've been on magazines and TV, and, you know, um, you know, sometimes mainstream media, ESPN or something, pick them up and of you, which that's always huge and everything. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I got to try to tell people who aren't in the bodybuilding because one of the first things, like, people I've currently worked with at work, they think that bodybuilders are so scary. I was like, well, stop and think about it like this. If you're in a gym for four plus hours a day, you're working off a lot of stress. <laughs> now, you know, and, and we all got levels of stress. We got families. We got jobs. We got... Just a whole bunch of stuff. Like, and I tell people, like, really, the only time you don't want to mess with a bodybuilder is when they're during prep. Yeah. And, you know, Carl, I mean, even, you know, referencing Amber. Amber's my girl. We got this whole rivalry between the universities that we went to. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to mess with her when she's going through prep. No, it's yeah. like I don't have to push her buttons and talk crap about Auburn. Like, oh, no, I'll, yeah. oh, she's in prep. Okay, I'm leaving her alone. I'll wait yeah, till definitely. afterwards. <laughs> Save my jokes for later. But, um, no, nah, what's in the future for you? You still gonna right now? Train? I'm just doing. Uh, honestly, I'm just doing a lot of uh, super fights, jiu jitsu competitions, um, tournaments. Um, I coach like little the little kids, five six year olds. Okay, so they compete too. So I'm I'm out there coaching them. Um, but honestly, that's kind of it. I mean, you know, I took I took um this year off of my PhD because I did it all year last year through COVID, and I just needed a break. Is a, I, I don't I don't blame you. That's yeah. <laughs> people don't realize school is one of the hardest mm -hmm. things. You know, it's one thing. The body is one thing. You know, you can work out and like you said, you can rest and recover, you right. know, have a, a chill day or take a week off, you know. But that mental stress. Yeah. And you know, and I'm sorry that I skipped over that. I should have did it in the beginning. Let's talk about your education background. And you I was looking this up on the way over here. You are highly freaking educated. Oh, yeah. I, I, I love to learn. I, I've always been a nerd. Dope. 
super nerd. Um, and it's weird because my parents actually didn't push education. They, they're, they're very religious. Mm -hmm. They wanted me to like, just dedicate my life to like religion. Yeah. Um, and I think that might be why I'm like, went the opposite way. Um, <laughs> No, no I, I get it too, because like my, um, not to catch up, but like my dad, he, you know, I, I love religion and everything, but my dad, he, he was in the medical field, but I also like on my family, I come from a very religious family. A lot of the people in my family become being pastors or mm -hmm. bishops and stuff. Exactly. Yes. And my dad, you know, he was a reverend. He got all kind of degrees in theology. That one, that's cool, but it's like that just wasn't for mm -hmm. me. So I was like, yeah. uh, it's like you, like I, even today, if you look at my YouTube history, it's always some nerd stuff. How. Yeah dams work how the electricity grid works and technology and all of that you know and i even surprise people sometimes at work when i hear like certain debates it's like well no actually in the bible it says like, how do you and i was like well my real name is ishmael so yeah my parents parents had to be really into religion and name yep. me ishmael so True. i know a thing or two i just don't you know blast it out there you know but yeah, going back to your your, your education background, um, you went to Texas Women's University, right? Yes, that's where I okay. got my master's degree. Okay. So I went to like um, I went to like a small like technical school for mm -hmm. my associates. Then I was pregnant again, so I went to University of Phoenix because I had to do something online. Gotcha. Um, and then I I hated online. I was like, I want it in person. I was working at MD Anderson at the time. Um, I found out about the executive MBA program at Texas Women's. Okay. And I loved it. Nice. You got your master's degree, 15 months. It was like, oh, wow. Okay. It was nonstop, though. I mean, you were just no breaks, no summer. You know, straight. Okay. Just straight, straight. straight. Okay. School. Um, but I loved it. And I really, I honestly thought I was going to work at MD Anderson for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I never saw myself being a business owner, but it got to a point where I was working there and I had clients, and it got to a point where I was like, I have to choose one. And I chose the business route. But it was good, good because I already you. had the business background. Yeah. Um, and then it was through like, you know, obviously I have a lot of certifications in nutrition and training. And um, but I realized that like even working with clients in nutrition, you can teach someone how to eat, you can teach them how to work out. Yeah. But if you can't get to like mm. what's going on in here, yeah, you're really not gonna change their life forever. Good point. Um, and that was always the mental aspect was so huge for me, even when I was coaching. Mm -hmm. um, I would always ask people when they came in, like, why do you want to do this? Why do you want to be a bodybuilder? What's uh -huh. your why? Like, what what's the driving factor, you know, to, to doing this? Because I would have to remind them of that when it got hard. That is smart. Mm -hmm. Damn. Mm -hmm. I used to Just like I said, folks, she's smart. <laughs> yeah, I used to keep notes on everything, yeah. like why they wanted to do it, what their reasoning was. So I would remind them of it. I um, mean, that's how I ended up. I was like, you know what? I want to, I've always wanted my doctorate. Okay. I thought it was going to be in business, mm -hmm. but I changed it. So I was, I started doing psychology. Okay. That's dope. And look, going back to something you said earlier, bodybuilding itself, it's a real psychological thing. Cause I've seen certain documentaries and like you mentioned earlier about body dysmorphia, some, you know, doctors and educated people will, would agree that it is a certain degree, mm -hmm. especially you get to that pro level, especially that Olympia level. Yes. It is a form of body dysmorphia, yeah. depending on how you look at it. That's, you know, I, I see where they're coming from. And it means it's like, well, maybe someone just want to look up in the morning and just look like a damn superhero. Yeah. You know, well, and the thing is like, and you do not realize this, but you, and especially if you're in a gym all the time and you're mm -hmm. around other bodybuilders, when you walk out into a normal place, People are staring because you look different. You're, yeah. And and this is one of the things where my, and actually I, re, I remember we were in, I think we were in Louisiana. We did a show, pro show, and like, it was maybe San Antonio. Okay. And there were like six of us figure pros and Amber and two yeah. other like really tall pros. And when we were walking through like the river walk and stuff, everybody was like staring, like stopping. I believe staring. it. And I remember like, Two of our younger like pros, they they were getting upset about it, um, because they're like, oh, it it just made them feel uncomfortable. Gotcha. And I remember telling them like, you don't look normal, and that's the life that we've chosen. Like, yeah. We've chose not to look normal, so don't think of it like as a negative thing. Think of it as a positive. Thing. Oh yeah. Because they're saying, wow. I'm staring at you because you don't look like everybody else. Absolutely. And that's yeah. a great thing to me. It's funny because like I was I did a photo shoot with Amber, maybe it was 
2016, 2000. Actually, you know what? Was that that show that you're talking about? Santo, was that by Tim Gardner? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. It was after that show. Me and her did a, yep. a photo shoot maybe a week or a couple of days after that show. And we were at this beautiful park downtown that's connected to Wortham Theater. So the backdrop, these beautiful waterfalls. And I remember when she changed outfits and um, she had on like a crop top. And, you know, it's like people on their bikes and like one guy like just stopped. Like he was in the middle of on his, yep. you know, his little bike ride. He stopped and, you know, he wasn't rude or anything. He was very respectful. And he just started asking her questions. Yep. And, and you know, I've been around bikes. I was like, I'm just... Setting up my camera equipment. Yeah, I was like, I was like, hey, if you want to talk to him or whatever, I got to set up my equipment, change lenses and stuff anywhere. I don't care. You know, it's not cutting in a time or anything. And, you know, and people will stop and ask for a picture or a mm -hmm. picture with them or a picture of them or whatever. Yeah, it's like, you know, bodybuilders are that kind of like what the late Rich Pian said, five percenters, you know, mm -hmm. if you're going to eat, sleep, that lifestyle, you got to remember too, especially like the weather's been ridiculously hot. <laughs> used to across the nation is like, you know especially if you're a female bodybuilder you're walking oh, yeah. out in short shorts mm -hmm. and you know a muscle shirt yeah people are going to stare people are going to comment people you know i i hate when people do this like just kind of sneak and take a cell phone picture like just ask you know most bodybuilders are, are fucking pose for you and yeah, do a little video you, you know like they yeah. most of them like that shit so yep. excuse my french yep. but it, it's like wow, you know. Um, but no, I, I I believe it. I I definitely believe it. Um, and even like, what was that? Last year I went to the Phil Heath that was on the campus of U of H, mm -hmm. and even though it was a Saturday, you know they still had some oh, regular people, oh, yes, yeah, student athletes. Yeah. And it's like I was outside doing a couple of photo shoots, and people, you know, students are passing by, like mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> <It's> yep. Like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and how do you how did you handle that personally? Like when you've when you've competed and even now you look phenomenal now. So you. you're welcome. So when you when you're out and about that people stopped you and how do you how do you take it in? Um, I think at, at first I just ignored it. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, like even to this day, I don't notice it as much. It will take. Um, and of course, like so my boyfriend now we were best friends for like way before we started dating. And I yeah. remember I used to go hang out with him and his sister and his sister would always tell me, people are staring at you. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, are they like, it's now it's just, it's normal. And, and I kind of like, I understand why they do it. I know that a lot of times they don't even mean to do it. Yeah. If sometimes if I'll catch somebody staring, I'll like, hi, like, you know, yeah. because I don't want to, you know, come off rude because then I don't want to, promote that negative stereotype of bodybuilders yeah. that were all like self-centered and vain and rude. So if I see someone staring at me, I'm just like, you know, wave. But now it's, it's kind of weird. Well, COVID kind of changed it, but I always tell people when you're walking out like in public and stuff, people love to come up and touch you. Yeah. They're like, Oh, they grab your yeah. arms. They touch your shoulders. They're like, grab your leg. Like, this can't be real. This guy, it's be so, something under this it's it's gotta be implants or thing. something. It's yeah. kind of like when you're pregnant and people mm -hmm. come touch your oh, belly. Yeah. Yeah. It's very similar. Um, and so now I'm just kind of like, it, it's it's normal. I do forget sometimes how muscular I am until I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh. That's oh, what people stare at. You still have muscle. like Because I don't work out like that anymore. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, I'm not like lifting in a mirror all the time. I'm doing like more martial arts stuff. We don't yeah. have mirrors. Um, and so sometimes when I like get dressed up or I go out, I'm like, oh, you 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 got a lot of muscle still. Gotcha. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And before we uh, wrap things up mm -hmm. here, plug in all of your social oh, media, okay. give shout outs, just, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, strength, body, mind on everything. So strength, body, mind underscore strength, body, mind. I have like two IGs. Don't ask. I I started one for jujitsu, one for bodybuilding, but now okay. they're kind of like just morphed. Um, I'm on Twitter. I have like OnlyFans. I have all kinds of stuff. Okay. Um, and, I and really, I just do a lot of photography. So probably seen a lot of photos. All over the place. Oh, that's another thing, too. You take some amazing photos. I, I love it. It's yeah. so fun. We, we got a link up for a photo yeah, show. I done I, took pictures of damn near a good portion of Team SBM anyway. Like, it's very creative, like a creative outlet As, for absolutely. me. I love it. I love it. That's why I was telling you earlier before we started, like, with this whole podcast. I mean, yeah, I could pay someone to do the editing and all that, but I like doing it myself. It's mm -hmm. kind of, especially on a day I'm not doing nothing, it's kind of therapeutic. It's like, okay, I'm going to plug this in here and do that. and you know, release it and it's rewarding when people listen or they watch and it's like, oh man, that's a good show you put on or whatever. Oh, thank you. I did it all 
myself in a day or whatever. Nah, that's that's dope. And people, I'll put the description, uh, put the links to all of her social yep. media and whatever in the description. Make sure you follow her, support. Um, thank you for listening. If you're listening to the end, you are my favorite listeners. Don't forget to support the podcast too. Buy merch, give us a like, follow, comment. Um, just whatever. Oh, actually, do you mind before you go just doing some posing? Sure. <laughs> sure. Just well, I guess for, for old time's sake. Yeah. You want me to stand? Yeah, yeah. All just right. uh Sweaty. When I start talking. <laughs> All right, you're good. You're good. Actually, yeah. Um, yeah, whenever you're ready. Yep. Awesome. Hey, you're just like two steps away from another bodybuilding show. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm really not. I like to eat and drink. I know that's right. Oh, well, thank you, Miss Trevino, for stopping by. Glad we was able to make this happen. Yeah. And uh, everybody be kind to each other until next time. Good night.